So do that. Speak directly to your current clients, your existing clients, about other ways that you can help. They already use your services. Why on earth would they not want more, more of you effectively? So please, please do that. Um, it might feel a bit off. You might feel a bit awkward. Like, what if they say no? Well, like I've said before, they might well say no, but not all of them will say no, okay? I've said this before. You will hear no. Get okay with hearing no. No happens. No happens to me. No, it's going to happen to you. It's how you deal with no. It's how you let no, how you feel about the no, yeah? Like I've said, how it's all about reframing no. It's no. No, that sounds great, but no, it's not for me right now. No can mean I don't have the money for that right now and I feel awkward telling you that, so I'm just going to say no. No is pretty much never. No way your service sounds awful. Why would I feel they want that? So think how you hear the no. But you're going to hear no. When did you last say 100% yes to everything that was offered up your way? Nobody does. You turn things down all the time. So it doesn't need to feel upsetting. Don't take it personally. I know it can feel like that. I remember... Earlier on my business journey, I said no, I was crushed. You, you've just got to decide how you want to feel and react to those no's. So you will hear no, but you will also hear yes. People that already work with you are going to want more of your help and support. So why not let them? Yeah, why not allow them to have more access? I've mentioned this before. I would find rehab really really challenging I would find that a real drain from a time commitment why would I not want that done for me yeah what about people that they've got the time they've got the money they don't have the skill why would they not want you to teach them how to long rein their horse or do not so much do it all for them but like teach them how to do the steps that would needed to rehab their horse People need support. Like it's, you can feel really like isolated as an owner. Why would they not pay for that? They will. They, you, you already help them. Why would they not want more? It's a bit like if you have, I bet all of you watching this have riding lessons from time to time, whether it's regularly or not. If you had a big championships coming up, why would you not want an extra lesson? You would. You'd be asking your trainer, I want to fit two more sessions in before X. It's exactly the same. Yeah. It's just how you see it. Don't project onto your clients. It's not up to you to decide what your clients will and won't like. Yeah. If they have you every six months, why on earth do they want not want you every three months? Yeah. Is it because they think six months is sort of standard practice? Is it that they just didn't know they could have more of your services? They won't unless you tell them. Okay. Next way to make more money, up your prices. That's might sit well with some of you and some of you might be like oh I couldn't do that well upping your prices to me it doesn't have to be drastic it's two ways to see it It doesn't have to be drastic like you could add your prices up up your prices by say five pounds five dollars it can be a small increase um but that adds up you know a small increase add up number of horses per per month or per week where will you be by Christmas you know you probably easily have depending on how many courses you see you might even have um you know half a month extra money so it's like working it's like it's like not working for two weeks but being paid for it so yeah consider what you could do with your pricing if you want to have your prices and you're struggling with like telling people why don't you think what else you could include so rather than say well last week it was 50 now it's 60 why don't you say look i'm revamping how i help people it was 50 now it's 60, 65 or whatever you want to do, but now you also get X, Y, and Z. It's up to you. You can charge what you want. You really can. You can pick your price. You just have to add in the value, yeah? And you have to be comfortable with it. You have to be aligned to it. It's not as simple as, oh, everyone in my area charges X, okay? Yeah, of course, you've got to, like, have an understanding of your country's financial situation and perhaps any like notable geographical restrictions but having you know having a high ticket offer which is about to talk about next is is a really positive thing and you can set your prices how you wish it's down to the value that you want to include it really really is and and also standing by them okay high ticket offer talked about this in the retreat cat um who i've worked with before lovely cat if you're watching big hello 
um, she or she was so inspiring on the retreat talking about how having a higher ticket offer which is something that we developed together has just changed everything she feels more aligned she needs less clients it is so much easier here's a question for you is it easier to sell something at five pounds you want 500 pounds say is it easier to sell something at five pounds to 100 people or is it easier to sell something at 500 to one person now i bet you think i bet lots of you thought Oh, it's just easier five pounds you like a I don't know like a mini ebook something really small oh that'd be easy people will definitely want to say you a fiver I could get 100 people to buy that getting 100 people to commit remember to check out pay their money is actually quite hard work yeah it's doable it's not impossible at all but it's more hard work than you'd think you need a bigger audience for starters like you need to be able to get in front you don't need to be able to get in front of 100 people. You probably need to be able to get in front of a minimum of 1,000 people to get 10% of them to say yes. Do you have that? Possibly not. You also need the systems in place. Like, what if 100 people all want to ask a question? Even though they're only paying £5, you'd be amazed. People can take a £5 investment sometimes, you know, as seriously as a, as a large investment and want to ask questions or it's not here, I can't find it. It's always in their junk folder. but they can't find it you could actually have to do quite a lot of work like could you handle 100 people emailing you like I don't think I could so what would you do yeah it is much easier to have a higher ticket offer like a top package done for you rehab you know you going like three four times a week doing all the stuff VIP option something that's high touch high ticket it requires more of you and your time yeah not it might be scary, but do you know what? If you don't create something, how can anybody say, yes, please? Yeah, it needs to exist. You know, talk to them in the retreat. Think of the wine list. You look at the wine list. You might look at the cheap one and think, no, I'll upgrade. I can do better than that. Probably go jump to the most expensive and think, oh, I don't want to spend 300 pounds on a bottle of wine or whatever. Stick with the middle. Most people will always go with the middle option. But the beauty of having your low, your mid and your high ticket offer is the mid offer, which is your, you know, your core service, your in-person treatments. It makes that seem amazing value. It just makes people feel like they haven't gone for the basic option either. OK, so you need one. Yeah. Just focus on, on the clients you look after and what they actually need. What are the problems? What are the struggles? And how can you help them? There's just so much good in a high ticket offer. It's going to mean more work on your part. So you need to charge accordingly for that. Um, and it's got to meet the needs of the client. But there's so much you can do. So that is, in a nutshell, how you can up your income in three easy steps. Can't wait to hear which ones you're going to implement first. Do let me know in the group. Take care. Bye.